You know, I thought last season had a fair bit of isekai, considering that they brought us at least four. But it seems that with every new season, we're getting more and more. I mean, it's not like I'm upset about it. Personally, I love the genre. But with so many shows, it's getting pretty hard to keep up with all of them. And I'm sure some of you might be thinking the same thing. So, just like I did last season, here's a brief overview of every isekai or fantasy anime that will be airing this current season. First, we have the one that I'm sure that many of you have already heard about, a studio white box anime called The Hero is Overpowered but Overly Cautious, of course based off of a light novel of the same name. It essentially follows the many typical isekai templates, but with a slight twist that's supposed to add some sort of comedic element to it. What we have initially is a goddess chosen to save a fantasy world that's on the brink of destruction. So what's the best course of action? Well, of course summon a person from a different world who's extremely overpowered. I mean, that's how most world threatening problems seem to be solved these days. And it's funny cause they're actually kind of self aware that this is the standard. The thing about this show though is that our hero is as the title states, overly cautious, in the sense that he'll go well above and beyond what is needed to take out any enemy, even if there's something incredibly weak. And it's that element that will supposedly make this show stand out from the rest. Now, considering that this is the most popular on the list and two episodes are already out, it's likely that you already know all of this. But before I move on to the next series, it may be worthwhile to note that this is an isekai done by Katokawa, meaning it could be a potential new candidate for Isekai Quartet Season 3. Our next isekai on the list is Choyoyu, High School Prodigies Have It Easy Even in Another World, an adaptation of a light novel done by Studio Project No. 9. Essentially, we have a group of high school student prodigies who literally flew themselves to a fantasy world. And when I say prodigy, I mean they were dank and rompa style the best at a particular thing. Like one is the world's best entrepreneur, and another the world's top swordsman. And since it's seven of them, Chukun wasn't quite fitting for the job this time. Instead, they were isekai'd by a plane. Now, what's important isn't how they got here, but rather how these seven prodigies turn this new fantasy world upside down with their incredible gifts. Since they pretty much collectively possess the world's greatest knowledge, they're able to easily advance the society that they find themselves in, and by doing so, become more known throughout this new world. Personally, I find this premise a bit more interesting, so it'll be one of the shows that I'm checking out this season. This isn't the only anime being brought to us by Studio Project No. 9 though. They're also airing the anime adaptation of the isekai light novel Didn't I Say to Make My Abilities Average in the Next Life. Similar to the cautious hero anime, it's more of a comedic fantasy. And yes, Chukun does make an appearance in this one. Basically, our protagonist lived a life burdened by the high expectations set for her by all her peers. Because she had exceptional abilities, she was unable to make any friends. Then, when she had died while throwing herself in front of a truck to save a little girl, she encounters God, who gives her an opportunity to be reborn to a fantasy world. This was good because now she could be reborn without any of the spectacular abilities she had in her old life. All she really wanted was to be average, and that's what she requested from God. But that's where she went wrong. You see, God took into account the average power of all beings in the new world, whether they were human or not. So this included very powerful magical beasts and monsters resulting in her being quite stronger than the average human. So the story basically becomes this OP girl trying to make herself fit in as a normal human at her prep school. Personally, I'm usually not one for these lighthearted fantasy style anime, but based on how it sounds, I think it might be worth checking out episode 1 at the least. Now, taking a break from isekais, next we have a straight up fantasy by Studio EMT Squared, bringing us the anime adaptation for the light novel Assassin's Pride. Fantasy is a rather loose description for it though. Sure it has fantastical creatures and elements, but the story is a bit different from what we would typically define it as. What we have is a post-apocalyptic world where everywhere but the last city of Flandor is shrouded by darkness, and within that darkness are savage monsters known as Lankanthropes. To protect the city from the darkness, each block of it is encased in a glass dome, and each dome is connected by a glass hallway within which are the last remnants of humanity, who are divided into the nobles and the commoners. The reason nobles are, well, nobles, is because their blood allows them to manifest mana which in turn gives them the superhuman abilities needed to fight the Lankanthropes. Now, rather than follow the life of some prodigy as he takes on the monsters lurking in the darkness, we instead follow an assassin who must train a potential bastard daughter of a noble and a commoner to see if she can manifest her abilities with mana. 
If she's unable to bring forth her mana-based skills, then that would be proof that she's not blood-related to her supposed noble father, and at that point she would have to be assassinated. The story pretty much goes from there. So it'll be cool to see how the other elements of this world play into this main story involving the assassin and his student. Switching back to more isekai now, the manga Kimono Michi is getting an anime adaptation by Studio ENGI, which isn't as much of a newcomer to the anime industry as you'd imagine, since it was founded by Katakawa and is one of their subsidiaries. At this point, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Katakawa made this studio for the sole purpose of pumping out isekais. As for this particular anime, it's another of the more lighthearted series this season, following the standard of the protagonist being summoned to take care of the world's monsters. Except this time he's a pro wrestler, and because he loves all animals, he doesn't really like the fact that he has to kill monsters. So instead, he just doesn't. It seems like an attempt to break away from the traditional isekai mold, but personally, I don't see the interesting aspect about it. This next one I'm not entirely sure if it counts as an isekai. I mean, if being dragged down to the world of demons by a demon after being sold for money to demons puts it into that genre, then sure. But what we have here is Bandai Namco's adaptation of the manga Welcome to Demon School, a two-core anime covering the life of a human boy as he spends his days in school in the demon world. So far, the initial reception has been alright, and the manga is also rated fairly well, so perhaps this could be another fun show to check out. But there seems to be no end to these playful isekai, because even the next series is just a fantasy slice of life placed on top of the isekai template. It's called The Ascendance of a Bookworm, a light novel adaptation covering the next life of a girl after she was reincarnated from having died during an earthquake. The cause of death was from being smothered by her massive collection of books as they toppled over her. Now that that's made it clear just how much she loves to read, her last wish was to be reincarnated so that she could read even more. However, this new fantasy world that she finds herself in isn't the most modern one. Only nobility has access to books, and very few commoners are even able to read. So when she finds herself as the daughter of a mere soldier, she has to figure out a way to gain access to the books that she so desires. And that's pretty much how the story will go. As I said, not my particular cup of tea, but the source material is rated rather well, so it could become an interesting show. That was the last new isekai on the list. Now we just have regular shows that aren't quite fantasy, but could be considered somewhat related. Val X Love is an adaptation of a manga of the same name, in which we have your typical social outcast becoming the strong, powerful hero. In this case, the actual Norse god Odin gives this outcast a revelation that he has to save the world, and in order to help him do so, Odin sends his nine daughters, the Valkyries, to assist in battle. And the source of those Valkyries' power is love. So based on that, this probably isn't going to be the greatest show this season, but I guess if you need a new ecchi show to watch, then this would be the one. On a more serious note, we have a more modern fantasy coming from Studio Anima & Co, an original anime called Special Crime Investigation Unit Special 7. Now, the reason I say modern is because it's literally a fantasy setting placed in a modern world, in the sense that mythical beasts like dragons, dwarves, vampires, or elves all lived amongst the humans, but as time progressed, the dragons who stood above everyone else started to vanish. The ones that remained adopted the form of humans and now live together. However, a group known as the Nine is trying to obtain those dragons' powers, and it's the task of the Special Crime Investigation Unit, Special Seven, to stop this group. Each member of the Seven has their own unique ability that makes them capable of fighting against the Nine. So we'll follow this Special Seven as they hunt down this evil organization. And next we have my personal favorite on the list, Fate Grand Order Babylonia, which I will be covering in a series of separate videos in the near future. Now, it's not so easy as to summarize this show in a few sentences, which is why my next video is going to be on what FGO is. For starters, you don't really need to be familiar with Fate as a whole to watch this series. Although it would help a lot, it's really not necessary. So I'd definitely give this one a watch, even if you haven't seen any of the other Fate anime. Then for returning series, we have SAO Alicization, War of Underworld, another show that's definitely worth watching especially now that things are about to pick up even more from the first season. Another returning series is the new season of Seven Deadly Sins, which, to be honest, I didn't even know was happening until the first episode came out. From what I've heard though, Anaplex decided to drop this show, so instead of A1 Pictures doing the animation, it's now Studio Dean, who apparently didn't have enough time so they outsourced it to a different studio, which now unfortunately results in a rushed and poorly animated adaptation of a great series. 
Last on the list is the prequel OVA to ReZero called Frozen Bonds. This will be airing on November 8th, and will give a bit of backstory on how Amelia came across Puck while on her trip down to the Roswell Mansion after being chosen as a candidate for the royal election. I think it'll be a nice little prepper for the upcoming second season of ReZero, to which no release date has been announced for yet. Anyway, that's pretty much every isekai and fantasy airing this season. Of course, I'm sure there are plenty other shows airing that are much more worthy of your time, so be sure to let me know in the comments which ones you'll be watching this season. Now, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao!